Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comp video. Chances are, if you've been resisting the upgrade urge for 2015 and you're waiting to see what hardware is going to pop up in 2016, you're probably waiting to see both Zen and Arctic Islands, which of course is going to rival both Intel's processors as well as NVIDIA's range of graphics cards respectively. With all of that said, there has been a lot of speculation regarding the release schedule for their hardware. And we do know that the products have been taped out, essentially. So what we're waiting for right now is for AMD to just give us the go-ahead and say, well, this is when they're going to be released. These are the process nodes and, the, of course, the damn specifications of the hardware. Well, we have some news from Devinder Kumar, who is, of course, AMD's CFO, when he was speaking at the Technology Investors Conference for AMD's behalf. But he hasn't given us all of the information that we'd like to uh, have at our disposal. The first thing that you should know, just so that we're all up to the same speed, is that Global Foundries are the ones who produce AMD's CPUs, whereas TSMC produce the company's GPUs. They're also responsible, just for your FYI, for NVIDIA's hardware as well. Now, the vendor has pointed out and not really surprising anyone, if I'm totally honest, that the company will be skipping 20NM totally. This isn't really a shock or awe to anyone concerned. In my opinion, at least, 20NM was never really in the forefront of discussion. And at least for the last several months, most have pretty much banked on the fact that we're going to be just seeing 16 or 14NM. We haven't known specifically what process Either, either one of the GPU or the CPU is eventually going to be using, but we have, of course, known that 20NM is looking exceedingly unlikely. Um, Devinder said, and I quote, We haven't given out specifics, but you know they're taped out the last few months, and typically what happens in the product, depending when you tape out, it can be 12 to 14 months from the time you tape out to the products starting to ship but we haven't been specific about, and you know the exact time frame. So what does that mean for us as consumers? What does that mean for us as gamers? And what does that mean for us for who are following the PC hardware? Well, honestly, it could go one of two ways. It could mean that we get it roughly mid-2016, or it could start slipping back to potentially the first quarter of 2017. Now, it really does, to be honest with you, depend upon multiple different factors. And, of course, because AMD are not really being that forthcoming with the specifics, the only thing that you can do as a customer is make some guesses. Now, in my opinion, it would suck balls if it went to 2017. It would also relieve a lot of the pressure from both Intel and Nvidia because, let's face it, competition is good for the marketplace and Pascal being released at the same time as AMD's Radeon hardware would be pretty great for the marketplace in terms of it being a major shakeup. It would mean, yes, we're probably still going to be seeing GDDR5 graphics cards on the market. Because, well, honestly, in the mid-range, you don't need one terabyte per second of bandwidth. On the other hand, it's also fair to say that GPU-wise, for the top-end cards, that type of bandwidth is required. So, I think... The, the idea of releasing fully DX12 compliant GPUs, the idea of a really great alternative for um, Intel's hardware. It's not to say that, once again, the FX range is bad. It's actually a really good processor, and I'm using one on one of my rigs. I'm actually using it as a rendering system, and it's absolutely fine. You know, there are there is no issue with it. Essentially, it's just that we want better competition, because if AMD can put out a faster chip, it will mean that Intel are going to put out a faster chip. And to be honest with you, despite the fact that I love the Skylake platform in terms of the benefits it has, as I've mentioned several times over, it's just not that impressive performance-wise. You know, if you're if you're doing certain things, for example, if you if you're running certain applications or you need 
really fast SSDs because we're at the point now where, for the sake of argument, SATA is just completely saturated. It doesn't matter what you do. And it's not that companies like Kingston or Corsair or, you know, Bob down the road can't produce faster SSDs. They can, CM2. It's just that it doesn't matter. The convoy sh will sail as fast as the slowest ship. And in this case, the fastest ship is the is the Saturn and the slowest ship uh, sorry the fastest ship is the is the actual drive and the slowest ship is Saturn. you just basically are saturating the bus there's not much you can do you can improve the access times a little bit you can do this and that to maybe improve the size of the drives but that's essentially it um and it's just kind of stagnated so skylake's great with that you've got m2 you know they've increased the bandwidth across the board and they've done all these other little bits and bobs but it's still much the same. Haswell is good. Um, you know, it, it's more than good enough rig. And it's arguable, once again, very arguable, that if you've got something along the lines of a 2500K, you just haven't really needed to upgrade. There's a running being a uh, running joke on the gaff that you know we're, people are going to be running 2500Ks well after the fact of um, HBM2 is normal. And no, I'm not a member of NeoGAF, but I read it quite frequently. It's a really great place for news and kind of like the community and the memes also give me a chuckle while I'm eating my food at work. It's just kind of a good relaxation thing, you don't you know. But still, I, my point remains the same. It's like we need something to shake up the market. So hopefully we're going to see the first half of 2015, uh, sorry, 16. It would be pretty damn impressive for them to go back in time several months, wouldn't it? Now, in terms of hardware, the GPU side of things, AMD have actually done quite a lot of really good stuff. The mid-range cards, for example, I'm actually reviewing a new graphics card at the moment from AMD, and it's really impressive what you could get in the mid-range now. It really is. It's just absolutely insane. And it's like even the GTX 960, really impressive card. I would say it's maybe a little bit too expensive for the performance you've got. It's primarily bandwidth-related. Um, when I reviewed the card, I, I've said pretty much the same. But it's like, AMD's, AMD are really impressive in terms of what they're offering. It's just that they can't quite take out the 980 Ti and their cards are running a little hotter. On the other hand, their cards are also a lot cheaper. And their Crimson drivers, which I've been messing around with a little bit, are actually, it's a major improvement. So they've done a lot. Um, reduce the drive overhead, the drivers in terms of the interface is improved, which is good. They're taking the feedback on board, which is obviously a pretty important step for any company. It's like, you know, there's no point in knowing all the stuff if you're never going to do anything about it. See Konami. But yeah, um, hopefully 2016 is the date we see it. In my opinion, well, in my hopes anyway, not opinion, I would like to see them released as soon as possible. I mean, personally, I'd like to see them on my doorstep in January uh, January 2016, but it's looking like that's not very likely. It's also possible that Pascal could also see a few uh, setbacks as well. After all, it's not like we're seeing engineering shipments that have, you know, started to pass the muster and we're starting to see the press releases on, you know, the specifications of the card or leaks, which is obviously a pretty good sign. Once you start seeing die shots, that type of stuff, it's pretty obvious that the card's going to be released fairly soon. Instead, just like AMD, you might see the odd, here's an engineering sample of this particular version of the card. And do remember... And this is something I've discussed before. This is a really fascinating story. You can take a look at the history of 3DFX, who of course was synonymous with 3D acceleration back in the late 90s, and pretty much could be attributed to kickstarting a lot of the 3D acceleration malarkey that we enjoy today. They put out a lot of the technology. Um, they had dual graphics cards back in the days of the Voodoo 2. But essentially, just before they went bankrupt, they were still working on the Rampage, I believe it was called. It's been a long time. I think it was Rampage. Anyway, the, essentially the last range of cards. And I'm probably completely wrong. It might not be the Rampage, actually. The Rampage might be the Voodoo 3. But anyway, I, dis I digress. It, the, the point being their last range of cards. And the engineers were actually putting notes when they were working on their cards 
um, that you know there are samples and bear in mind uh, 3dfx had actually acquired stb which was another reason by the way for their downfall because they put so much money into acquiring stb to manufacture their cards essentially they robbed a lot of their own cash reserves and on top of that companies such as creative labs and um elsa and all of these other partners that man that they'd worked with in the past now were suddenly their rivals so that was a big deal but anyway up until pretty much the last minute the techs were still working on the cards and they'd come up with all these notes like yes crashes when x happens or crashes when y happens or whatever else and there are some engineering samples which made their way into the world and they're pretty rare if you if you guys are curious about this stuff you can check out dodge's garage i believe it is and you could get a lot of information on the engineering samples of these cards. Quite interesting stuff, at least in my opinion. But anywho, um, they just couldn't do anything. They couldn't ask for a loan or anything like that. Because it wasn't like, yeah, you know, we've got these engineering samples and these are taped out. And, you know, we've got these samples and we're almost there. No, it was still going to take several months for engineering and for due diligence and to get the coolers and to get... You know approval so that you know they can, you can prove that your car doesn't explode into flames and burn everyone in the house and all of this stuff essentially they just couldn't do a damn thing and that's why i'm saying that yes because something's been taped out or that we see a shipment of a card and some manifest going from india to you know whatever it doesn't mean that the card's either out it's not necessarily an indication that the card's near fruition it just means that there are samples of it going about but those samples could be really early for sake of argument and i'm just speculating here for all we know and from what we've heard they were probably featuring hbm1 they maybe didn't have full bus width it was running at half speed maybe the, for example the card could be clocked at 1100 megahertz and these first test samples were running at like 600 megahertz and purely pulling out examples on my ass maybe half the shaders were disabled maybe it was crashing because or maybe it didn't have any cache enabled or maybe you know it didn't have let's say local data share or whatever for whatever processor whether it's cpu gpu whatever something may not have been enabled and so it was just basically for proof of concept and this stuff is quite important to remember when it comes to the creation of hardware. It's not that simple. And remember the Voodoo 3, uh, well, I guess it would have been, actually, whatever the hell it was called. It's really bugging me. I'm going to look that up as soon as I finish recording. But anyway, that card, whatever it's called, I'm going to call it Bane of My Memory at this point. Um, yeah, that was considerably simpler to produce than the latest GCN architecture or NVIDIA's Pascal. But with all of that said, I'm going to get going and do some Googling. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.